All right, hi again. Today I'm going to attempt to do something similar to this. Um, if I recall, I only used one brush. So I'm just going to dive in and uh, see what happens. If I were smart, I'd do this on a larger canvas, but I'm just going to pretty much do what I did the first time. Let's start with some... Uh, actually, I think I'll open the... Uh, let's see. The floating color picker, because I recall using this quite a bit. And a lot of blue, and I think I just used one. Well, actually, I used two brushes because I had some uh, some leaves in there too. Um, so I believe I used one of these oily brushes. So I'll start with oily three and see how it goes. Um, that's pretty good. And we can make some changes to this if we don't like the way that works. We can change the bleed and the paper textures and that sort of thing. Not a big problem. All right, so that's a little more like what I had, I think, right there. It's a little, little thicker looking, a little, uh, little more pigment on there. Somewhere right about there. Um, some other things we can try are uh, maybe making this relative. And also we can keep the angle the way it was or not. Um, we can change the size as needed. All right, so I guess we're ready to go. It was very dark blue. I'm going to use something a little less dark, a little greener, a little less dark. Just start working towards that. It's kind of going to work from memory. I think I had... Oh, I don't know. I think I had some orange down towards the bottom. Got a little more saturated looking. This this and as we get down towards the bottom start working in some of those other shades so I might use a layer for that I don't use layers a lot but when I do glazing I use layers quite a bit um, when you start seeing this gray being picked up that's usually there's a result of too much bleed or maybe it's picking up some of that paper texture. I might just turn that off altogether. So you get a little less, uh, a little less of that graying in there. So that's a good trick to know about. I'm not getting enough bleed now, so somewhere between the two. All right, so something like that. I'm not going to work that orange in there. I'm going to use glazing to do that. So I'll add a layer. Pick some orange. This way I don't have to pick a bunch of different hues. I can just start. That's too much. Start painting on a new layer. Start blending. I don't have to worry about blending between the orange and blue. That's going to happen naturally as I paint. I go along like that. A little more bleed in there. see that that blending kind of gets taken care of for us we don't have to worry about the hit between shades between the blue and the, the orange it just kind of happens automatically so that's really all there was to making the sky but uh, I don't really want to have that watercolor look so I'm just gonna merge these and go and overpaint that I want it to look more like oils and oils can be very translucent or they can be very opaque it just depends on what you're using with the quality of the pigments and the amount of uh, the, the type of uh, materials used in creating the, the pigments and lots of different things like that.
So really just using the uh, N key, I'm sorry, the comma key to uh, uh, use that, that color picker. Just kind of going over this and over painting it. And I got to kind of move things along. I only got I think 10 minutes to do to do this video. Just kind of go over this and overpaint it a bit. One of the one of these colors would look like they were very wet and very uh, very opaque. Whoops. <laughs> That happens sometimes when you have a uh, tablet plugged in. I haven't adjusted my, my tablet settings to the way I want them. So sometimes I get funny, funny the things that happen if I put, hit the wrong button or something. So I think that's close enough for now. I think I'll just leave it there. The store copy of that. Might want to adjust the colors a bit. Adjust. I, I like the color effects. It lets you radically adjust the... Uh, the value of an image based on the the colors that are in the image. Sort of exp exposing a grayscale image through a colored lens, except it keeps the uh, the color channels intact. So I'm going to have the lighter blues and the darker uh, colors down here. That's what I did before. Maybe go about halfway between those. All right, so I think I'll store a copy of that. Now we're at the point we're going to start drawing this tree. I'm not going to use layers or anything. I'm going to be uh, just use that same brush, take the opacity all the way up. Um, getting there, I'm going to turn that paper texture down some so it starts looking very fake. Um, really about it. That's and might get the size down a smidge more. We're really going to start hard on that pressure and go lighter and lighter as we go along. So, well, that's, that's okay. Um, turn this bleed down, I think, a bit. So, something like that. And then I'll take the size down. And we can start working on finer and finer. The thing with trees, I think, is just to keep it pretty random. Think it's going to keep going down? We'll just turn it sideways. You think it's going to keep going down this way? No, just have it go some other completely different direction. Or have it turn around completely like that. Or do something strange like that. Um, size a little bit finer. It's still bleeding too much. So just going to keep starting with hard pressure and going down to light pressure as I work. We get to doing everything I can to just make this unpredictable unpredictable looking. Bring one up here though. Never know what a tree branch is going to do. So that's a start. Anyways, I'm going to save a copy of that. Um, there's a lot more we can do with that. We can add a little highlight on the on the side there, etc. Helps use that sky color probably a little bit. May turn down the opacity a bit. So this is picking up more of that paper texture and so on. Maybe pick up a little fill color. Get a little bit of that in there. And it comes up here, this is towards the top, so forth and so on. All right, close enough. Um, now, I'm going to change my media. I um, might store another copy of that. To, uh, change my media to um, 
organic effects, and there's a real nice little brush in here somewhere. I think it's uh, called uh, Ranches or something. I'd have to see. That one might be nice, but I think Simple Trees, Simple Trees might be the one I'm looking for. Yeah, that's the one. And we're going to keep it real simple. Real simple, just like that. Uh, tree doesn't necessarily have to have a lot of stuff on it. Uh, one thing we can do is hit X on the keyboard to reverse that brush a little bit. Swap it back and forth. It looks like a uh, missile tool or something. Uh, I might turn it upside down, hit the Y on the keyboard. Whoops. Hit the Y on the keyboard. Let's see. Y, here we go. Why not? To do it upside down like this and so on. So, yeah, it's just real simple. Don't want to overdo it. If we overdo this, it's going to start looking really junky. So we'll keep it real simple like that. It's a lot of bare, bare branches here. And that's about it, really. We're setting it upside down. And that will be my tree. All right, let's just add a little bit of highlight to that, too. Um, don't want to get too green with this. I'm going to use a kind of a yellowish color because it will match that. I'm going to make sure I'm in uh, matte mode here. Matte. Um, probably want to change that bleed quite a bit. Let's see. Just add a smidge. Highlight up here. Just a smidge. Do this especially because it's you don't want it to be uh, you know too bright against that really bright sky back there. All right, so that's it. That's our little tree project. And uh, um, again, there's a lot we can still do with this. Go and uh, adjust those colors again more if we want to play with those colors. Um, adjust curves. So forth and so on. Saturation, any of that. So it's all stuff we can you know, use as much as, or as little of that, that as we want. I just want it slightly brighter, like that. All right, so maybe a little more saturation. No, I don't want to get carried away with that. You don't want something too saturated. All right, so um, that's it. Thanks for watching, and talk to you later.